Hey guys, welcome to the second episode of my deep dive into masking. Today we're going to talk about how you can actually implement masking in CSS. So masking, as far as a CSS feature, has actually been around for a little while, but only in a specific implementation. So consistency across browsers is a little spotty, so let's take a look at caniuse.com. So if you're not familiar, caniuse.com is a great resource for browser compatibility charts. It showcases what features are supported in which versions of the browser. So looking at caniuse.com, we can see that there's pretty solid support in WebKit browsers. And this is what we're going to focus on in this episode. So we're going to dive into the WebKit implementation, and then we're also going to discuss how this implementation is different from the specification of the W3C and how this may change in the future. So let's dive in. So we're going to start off with this file, and you can see we have a background image with this mountain range and some text laid on top of it. And you'll notice when I hover over this text, it actually animates its position on the x-axis. So what I want is I want this text to be hidden by the mountain range. So we're going to use our mask to hide the portions of the text that overlap the mountain range. So we can jump into Photoshop and here you can see the original image that I used for the background as well as some text laid on top of it so that we can set up this design. And you can also see that I actually have a mask already set up on this layer. So we can go into it and mask it and you can see if I move the text around it stays hidden behind the mountain range. Now what we can do is go into our mask itself and actually copy and paste that and use that as the image but for WebKit's implementation of masking, we actually need an inverted Luma mask. So if I do Command I on Mac, it'll invert the colors, the black and white values of this image, and we can save that out and use that as our mask. So we're going to jump into the CSS, and masking in CSS is based very closely off of how CSS backgrounds are implemented, in that they have the same kind of properties. So where we have background images, we have mask image, mask size, mask position, and repeat, etc. So what I'm going to do is actually go into where we have our background image implemented, copy all those properties so that we get the same values applied to our mask. Then I'm just going to update those with the WebKit mask prefix since this is the WebKit implementation. Then I just need to update the reference to the mask image so that it's pointing to the image that we saved out. And if I go in and test that in our website, you can actually see that now we have our mask lined up exactly with our background image because it's sized and positioned the exact same way. And as it animates, it continues to hide behind the mask. The mask doesn't move, just the content behind it. The next thing I want to do is take this details element and apply a vector mask to it. We're going to do this using CSS clip paths. So this gives us a little more flexibility because it takes a CSS shape and then we can actually manipulate that shape and animate it with CSS. So in order to do that we actually need to define and create our CSS shape and you can do this manually but it can get rather tedious. So there are a variety of tools out there that make it easier for us to do this. Um, one of them is this CSS Shapes Editor, which is a Chrome extension for Chrome Dev Tools that a friend of mine, Raz Van Kalman, made. And you guys can check this out on GitHub and use that to create them in the browser. There's also a useful website called Clippy, which allows you to create clip paths um, and CSS shapes and use those in your code. So we're going to use Clippy and we're just going to create a little shape and then just copy and paste the code that it generates into our CSS. So we can paste in that WebKit clip path snippet. And you'll see it has a polygon. And that polygon is defined by a series of XY coordinates. And these are the points that define the shape of the polygon. We can open up our document again and refresh it. And you'll see we now have that clip path applied to our element. Now what I want to have happen is I want on hover of this element, I want the shape to change and grow to expose more of the element itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back into our code and apply a WebKit transition. So we're going to apply a transition to our WebKit clip path property with a duration of 0.4 seconds 
and the E is in out. And this is gonna give it some nice easing as it starts and as it ends. Then what we're going to do is apply a hover state to our element and then add the new clip path that we want it to change to. So this is a new clip path that we pulled in from Clippy. And we can go back in and test our document and you'll see as I hover over it, we get this nice animation of the clip path that exposes more of the element. And then as we hover out, it goes back to the original clip path. So now I wanna get into some more complex examples of what we can achieve with masking. As I'd mentioned, masking is based closely off of CSS backgrounds. And in CSS backgrounds, we can actually use multiple CSS background layers. So we can have multiple CSS images within our background. We can actually do the same thing within masks. So we can have multiple mask images applied to the same element. Now, you may be wondering, well, what does this actually do? And we actually have really interesting control over how these multiple mask images are applied to each other. So how they are applied to the alpha of the underlying content. So I'm gonna go through an example here and you can see here we just have these white divs on our page and we're gonna go through and apply some interesting masking effects to them. So here's the first one we're gonna do in Illustrator and you can see it's just a SVG sprite sheet. So I've got these two separate images and we're going to layer one on top of the other. And so the goal is going to be having this big circle sort of cookie cut out our div and then have the gear icon removed from that. So we can go into our CSS file and simply specify a mask image identifying the URL for our mask, so this gear.svg. And if we go in and test that quick, you can see now we're getting the circle, so it's masking out that content the way that we wanted. Next, what we're gonna do is going to set the mask position, so this is going to offset our mask, and we're going to pass in two positions, so the origin, the first image is at zero, zero, and the second one, because of the size of this element, and the size of the image is negative 65 on the X and zero on the Y. Then we're going to add no repeat to make sure it doesn't repeat. And we're going to add this other property, which is specific to masking, which is mask composite. And we're going to set this to source out. So this means that when it, we draw the new mask content onto our existing content, it's going to use that as sort of a cookie cutter and remove that content out from it. Then we simply add this, the same image again to our mask image. So we have our two images we're using, but in this case, because it's a sprite sheet, we're specifying the same image. Then if we test that, you can see we get the results we wanted. We have our gear showing up inside, so we're actually designing with the alpha channel on this element. So it's neat being able to design with the alpha channel like this, but you could actually do this in a design tool and just export it. But what we can do, because we have this in CSS, is we can actually create a hover state that moves that second layer of the mask image. So if we set the mask position upon hover to the same 0, 0 for the original image, then negative 65, and move the Y value to negative 10 pixels, you can see when we hover over it, now that image, the gear icon, actually moves. Then we can go back in and create a transition for our mask position so that it'll smoothly animate between those two states when we hover over the icon. So that was a pretty basic example of how we can use multiple mask images along with mask compositing to create some interesting masking effects. Now I want to go into a bit more complex of an example. And here are the images, here's the image that we're going to use. And again, we're using an SVG sprite sheet and we're going to have these stars sort of fly outside of our content. If we go into our CSS, again, we just specify our mask image, in this case, ma magic.svg. Now we're also going to specify the mask size, just so we don't get any weird scaling and everything sized the exact size of our SVG image. And then we're going to set repeat again to no repeat, so we don't get any repeating of the mask. Then we can go in and test that and just make sure that that original circle is being cut out the way that we want and everything looks good. 
Then we're going to create all of our mask images. So we're just going to reference the same image for each of those different images, sprite sheet images that we want to use out of that one image. Then we simply set the positions for each of those. And I have these figured out already. I did this manually, but just to kind of figure out the position of how you want those sprite sheet images positioned correctly within the main element. Now for this one, we're going to set mask composite to XOR. And what this is going to do is it means that when the mask image overlaps other content, it's going to cut it out like the cookie cutter effect we were getting before. But if it's outside that content, that is where it's already transparent, it's going to actually add and draw the content in making it opaque. I think I added one too many mask images, so I'm just gonna remove that. So if we test this, you can see it looks pretty similar to the other one. I just have the content cut out of that original circle, but that's because none of it's in the transparent space. It's all overlapping the original mask content. So now we're gonna again add a hover effect that's going to set the position of these stars so that they're partly outside of that circle. And you'll see the effect that we get here. So here you can see, because we're using the XOR compositing mode, when the masks are outside or overlapping transparent regions, they become opaque. But when they're over overlapping opaque regions, they become transparent. So this gives a neat, interesting effect that we don't get with the other compositing, where it kind of mixes and matches both adding and removing content in an interesting way for neat visual effects. And again, we can go back into CSS and create a transition for the mask position, and it'll smoothly animate as we hover over this content, creating a neat little animation. So I have one more example I want to show you with compositing where we're going to use a, a variety of different compositing modes. And the, here's the image that we're going to use. And the effect that I want is I want this battery icon inside of our content. And as we hover over it, I want that battery to fill up so the in, inner content of this to be revealed in a smooth animation. So going into the CSS, we're just going to add that mask image, which is battery.svg. We're going to set the size of our mask again to the size of our SVG sprite sheet and we're going to set it to no repeat. Then we're just gonna test that to make sure that we're getting the circle masked out the way we want, which looks right. Now we need to go back in and add a mask image reference for each of those sprite sheet layers that we want to use in our mask. Then we're gonna go in and add positions for each of those, which I already have set up. Now what we need to do is we need to set the compositing. The first image we want source out. So this is the outline of our battery and we want this just cut out from that circle. The next layer we have is the battery's fill content. So this is the part of it that's gonna show when it's actually full. And for this, we're going to use destination over. Now this is pretty similar to source out the original, but it draws it in reverse order. Then our final layer is the part, the little strip that we have that's going to hide and reveal the battery's fill. And for this, we're going to use destination in. And this means that the part that it's overlapping on our previous layer is going to be revealed only where it's overlapping. So if it's not overlapping, you won't see it. And then if it's completely overlapping, that part will be revealed as the mask. So if we test this right now, you only see the battery outline. And the reason for this is that that last strip, that last layer isn't overlapping the battery's fill layer at all. So what we need to do is again, go back and create a hover state and adjust the position of that so that it's completely overlapping that battery fill content. And if you look at these values, we're only updating the X position of that last mask layer. So you can see it's going from 200, negative 210 pixels to negative 182 pixels. So this will have a cover that fill area of our battery. Then you can see that as we hover over it, you see the full battery. Now we can go back into our CSS and add a transition so that it completely animates from the far left to covering 
the battery's fill content completely, filling up our battery. As I've mentioned, the implementation we're focusing on is WebKit specific. And this is actually deviated a little bit from the specification that the W3C has been developing. So I want to cover those differences. If we look here at the spec itself, um, and we look at some of the properties of mask, we can see they have mask image and repeat and position. So a lot of the things that we've already been talking about. So it's very still similar to CSS backgrounds. One difference though is that they have this mask mode property and this will allow us to specify whether we're using a alpha or luminance mask. So if you want to use like a ping for your mask with that has transparency and just apply that. So they also have a difference in the way that compositing works. So it still has this mask composite property, but if we look at the properties, the values that it takes, um, you can see it has add, subtract, intersect, and exclude. And this is different from WebKit's implementation where they have like the proper compositing names. And we can actually map these values so that add is equal to source over, subtract is equal to source out, intersect is the same as source in, and exclude is XOR. So these still map to the kinds of compositing properties that we have in the WebKit implementation. So as they finalize the spec and start implementing the final specification in all the browsers, we'll still be able to do pretty cool things um, using these features. So it's a cool feature to use. Obviously, as we've shown, you can use transparency to create interesting effects visually, but also with interactivity and animation. So it's gonna be really cool to see the kinds of things people create with masking in CSS. So that's it for my second episode on masking. If you wanna see more episodes like this, be sure to subscribe. Thanks. Mm -hmm.